coming next week on The Littlest Homo. Oh, what? honey, he's trying to tell us something. What? Your suit. <gasps> no. Oh, he hates your suit. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, that brightens you right up, Barry. It's fabulous. <laughs> what? <laughs> this? You're doing something wrong. <laughs> this? No, not there. <laughs> OK. Uh, not there, not there. Over here? Hey. Right here? Better. Hey. Better. We like oh, that. Great. Hey, OK, OK. Mm. Who made these hors d'oeuvres, Diane? I didn't know you could cook like this. <laughs> well, I couldn't have done it alone. <laughs>
No, Mr. Glantz, I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die, and this is my punishment. <laughs> Mr. Budgel, do you think Miss Coslo and Mr. Mackerel et al. will be joining us at the luncheon table, or should I just scrape their portion directly into the garbage? No, just put theirs into warmer for them, Mrs. Budgel, and they can throw it out later. Oh. Now we're sitting down to lunch, are we? No one ever says, how are you, Mrs. Budgel? My God, you do a lovely job mashing up them spuds, Mrs. Budgel. Yet every day, like clockwork, you're jarred up there to the table like sparrows in their nests with your little red beaks open wide. Are you all right, Mrs. Budgel? Oh. What's going on here? Must be two or three vegetables uh, on uh, that plate. Uh, Mr. Uh, Budgel's uh, uh, lunch. Uh, here are Wish. your beans. Mm. I'm not fond of the home cooking, you know. I prefer the magic chef. Oh, Mrs. Budgel got a few tricks up her sleeve. Yeah. Them beans are enchanted. Yeah. I allow they'll be releasing their magic dust later on tonight. Get your elbows <laughs> off the table. Get your elbows off the... Get your elbows off the table. Oh, is that cabbage local? Oh, yes, I believe that was the local cabbage. The countryman brought it this morning. Countryman? Mrs. Budgel is a little out of touch with the present. Oh, that cabbage smells like the past. Oh, I don't believe it's the cabbage you're smelling, Mr. Glenn's. Get a wash, for God's sake. You're like a grub. What, did you have a traumatic experience with soap and water when you were a child? Sure, real men got the smell. They got real man's odors. <laughs> oh, now, who the hell is that? Just when I'm eating my ketchup. Excuse me, I'm looking for the bundle. Yes. We are budgets. Oh, my name is Christina Coslow. I believe you know my mother. Well, oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Let's not be too hasty, Miss uh... Coslow. I believe my mother stays here, and well, I'm looking for my real father. Oh no, 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 no. What? No, 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 no. You see, my mother came into a sizable fortune due to the untimely death of my stepfather. Fortune? And a man who is my real father will inherit that entire fortune. Oh, of course, of course, of course. I am your real father, child. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> Mr. Budget, it's only money. Oh, please, you fool. Can't you see what's at stake here? The Adventures of Love Murphy of the Royal Newfoundland. Jeez, Pearl, I'm so bored. I could, I could jump through a hoop. Murphy, St. John's Vice. Hello, Detective Murphy? I hope I'm not taking you away from anything pressing. No, no, she's not pressing right now. <laughs> Only kidding, go ahead. This is Pearl Diamond. You know my husband, Jerry? Yeah. Well. He hasn't been himself lately. He's bored, and now he's threatening to jump through a hoop. I'll be right there, Mrs. Diamond. Yes? Murphy, St. John's voice. He's in here, Detective. Thank you. Jeez. That's not what I expected. Special services. Chief, get down here. There's a guy gonna jump through a hoop. Okay, Murph, I'll be right down. Uh, listen, Murph, uh, the hoop, is it high up or what? No, no, Chief, regular height, you know. Uh, lions, tigers on the other side of the hoop or what? No, no, nothing like that. He just got a hoop here, see, and he's gonna jump through it. Uh, the hoop itself, Murph, uh, is it on fire? Is it a dangerous hoop? No, no, Chief, just a regular hoop, you know, like a hula hoop. In fact, it is a hula hoop, a, a red hula hoop. Uh, the guy, Murph, is, is, he, uh, is he naked? Is he causing a disturbance? No, no, he got his clothes on, you know. Just his regular clothes, but he got a hoop here, see, Chief, and he's turning to go through it. Murph, uh, listen, if he's gonna jump through a hoop and he's not gonna hurt anybody and he's gonna keep his clothes on the whole time, I don't think you need special services down there, do you? No, no, I, I guess not, Chief. Uh, I guess I can handle it by myself. Thanks a lot, Chief. Okay, Murph. Wow, I wonder if Chief's ticking now. What a great guy. He handled that all by himself. I wonder if he'll give me a promotion. It's been Murphy of the Royal Newfoundland. Hello, Murph. 
Mark, sure, I hardly recognized oh, you. Mark, sure, I'd know you if you were boiled. Sure, my husband worked with your husband, sure, for years. Yes, girl, how are you? Oh, well, you know. Yes, I'm like that myself. How is your husband? Oh, good, good. And yours, Mike, is it? Yeah, Mike. Well, tell you the truth, girl, Mike takes a drink. Do yours? Oh. Well, no, not like that, no. Not, not so should notice. Oh, well, girl, count your blessings. Because my husband, although he's a very private person, like I said on open line this morning, he's up and down, but now drying out. Oh, you must be killed, are you, girl? Well, we knew we had a problem, you know, when he took off his clothes at young Mike's wedding. We were used to him doing the American tourist with the sunglasses on his private parts, you know. Yeah. And he used to do the elephant, didn't he, with the two pants pockets for her ears. Yeah, but that's not him then. He's the booze. Yeah, two different personalities all together. Yes, yeah. my dear, chalk and cheese. But yours don't take a drink, do we? No, well, not like that. You know, I mean, he might have a drink now Christmas, you know, or a special occasion, or if it gets dark at all. Yeah. You know, but he's a very sensitive person. You know, gets hurt very easy. He might be down to work and somebody say to him, see you after lunch, Rick. You know, he take that the wrong way, my dear. You won't see him for a couple of weeks. Aww. The odd morning, granted, he got to put a 40 ounce on his head to give him the ambition to get up out of the bed. But, you know, he don't drink. He's not a drinker. No, not like that, you know. Oh, a girl, count your blessings. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see you, Mark. Nice to see you, Mark. Take care of yourself, though. <laughs> I am your real father, child. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> Mr. Butch, it's Get only money. Hey, you fool. Can't you see what's at stake here? Uh, this is your uh, step witch. Oh, uh, mother, mother. You know... You are the daughter I've always missed. Oh. <laughs> you, you, look, you look the spit of your dear mother, Luce. You're... Thank you. Luce must have been awful young when she had you, though, was she? Oh, yeah, she was a child bride. Yeah, an infant bride, it looks like to me. You no, know, I don't think she was a bride at all, if yeah. I remember. I don't think she was a mother at all, Mrs. Coslow. <laughs> Hi, folks, trick or treat. <laughs> you What's for fool. supper? Oh, what a day. Oh, put the glasses back on. All right, the lunch pass is over, Mr. Glance back to the room. No, boy, I got a class in trade school now. I got to take off. See y'all later on. Mm -hmm. Sort of a cruel joke, Miss Coslow, when you consider the financial bind that Club Budget's in. Oh, boy, Fry, my fave. Not to worry about the club now, pet. Of course, silly me. What a mindless sprite I am. Yes. Of course, the sheriff was by with the foreclosure notice this morning. Bureaucratic obliquities, my dove. All we need is one sound sucker, investor. And I believe the financial fish is about to bite our hook. Yes. Yes. Is this the Budgel Bagum Tagum and Shagum investment brokerage? No. <laughs> oh. <sighs> yes. Yes, come right in. <laughs> uh, the lie serum works. Uh, e. Budgel here, President. You must be Mr. Uh, uh, Mulrooney, a uh, human Mulrooney. Well, Mr. Muldoon, shall we go view the goose that lays the golden eggs? Mr. Budgel. Mr. Budgel, I... I can't make head nor tail of these books. Is it possible that you are $150,000 in debt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't it wonderful how humor brings the family together, particularly in good times? <laughs> <laughs> You're hysterical, Mr. Mackwell. You've been working too hard. Human Mulrooney. Huh? I hardly recognize you outside your wrestling togs. I haven't worn those in 20 years, my good man. Oh, I have a delicate heart condition now. Yes. And who might you be? <laughs> I'm surprised you don't recognize me. So. Oh. I happen to be Albert. Mackerel. Albert Mad Dog Mackerel. <laughs> I'd recognize your spinning Dutchman anywhere. I, uh, I gather you two knows each other. Yes. Yes. Yes, we were finalists uh. in the All Newfoundland Wrestling 1966. Unfortunately, only one man could win. Yes, how fortuitous. Well, the makings of a tragedy here. My uh, head accountant and my uh, chief investor here, hand in glove. 
I haven't invested in anything yet. No, no. Well, time to get down to business. Macrell, you stay here and count the profits like a good man. Profits? <laughs> Yes, it's, it's been, been a good year. Yeah, well, let's go view the corpse. What? Uh, Wall Street terminology, hands-on commodities, fudging, pork bellies. Uh, follow me this way now. Bulls, bears, and golden hens. Uh, bullish, bearish, foolish, Polish, you know the We're kind going of... down to the basement? Well, you gotta go down to the bottom to get to the top, I always say. This is actually the scenic roof. You're a little bit big for the shoot. Now, mind your head. Oh! Mr. Butchell was going to call it the Rat Skeller. <laughs> yeah, but I was too on the money. Watch your head. Oh, 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 please. Oh, but you see, our exterminator, Mr. Lash, assured us that these weren't just regular run-of-the-mill rats. Oh, oh. They're super rats. Oh, yeah. Super rats. But they're not all super rats. No. Only no. the ones with the little S's on their sweaters. Yeah. Of course, by the time you see the S, you're gone or anyway. Watch your head. Oh, 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 There's oh. apparently only Excuse one me. thing that can kill them. What is that again, Mr. Butchel? Kryptonite, Mrs. Butchel. Kryptonite. Oh, yes. oh, there you go. Kryptonite. You see, another form of vermin had invaded our rats' planet. So the parent rats, who were really worried about their little baby rats, sent them to Earth in a record album. My oh, 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 Yeah, we're expecting a much better quality rat any day now on CD. Oh, yes. Come on, yeah. oh. Here are some exciting oh, scenes from next week's episode of House... Of Budgel. Mrs. Budgel, what's happening? You are under arrest for the murder of human Mulrooney. What? And may God have mercy on your immortal soul. Oh, uh, Mrs. Budgel, Mr. Budgel, uh, what about the due process? Don't worry, Mr. Mackerel, you'll be processed in due course. Oh, don't fret, Mr. Mackerel, sure, it's only a move upstairs to the prison floor. Besides, the food's a heck of a lot better up there, all subsidized by the federal government. Oh, good heavens, Mr. Budgel. It is a fur, fur better place that you go to now. Then you have ever been. Now we will go, and then we will be back. But in reality, we are always here. It is you who are going or staying, as you wish. Beautiful shipping man, you made my dreams come true. Your shiny flat corduroy bum 
told me I must have you. We watched our trek in the corner and we drank two dozen blue. We had a toke in the can and I fell in love with you. Beautiful shipping girl, you came down right after work. I came down right after work. Seventeen dark rum and coke made you a comatose jerk. I was a comatose jerk. Beautiful shipping girl with glassy belligerent eyes. Rolling around on the carpet, biting the knees of the guys. I bet one guy, okay? Look like a bug, you are looking for drugs. Help is your creative pain. Um, nobody coming to your production. The critics compare you again and again and again. You <laughs> Beautiful shipping man. Some days you never come to. Soon as you open your eyes, you reach for your smokes and your boots. It's just a straightener. You wonder why nobody's ever insanely attracted to you. I love you. Up on your feet, boy. Go brush your teeth and I'll talk to you. Over a bag of old ladies we found. We had our feet in the clouds, our heads on the ground. A beautiful shipping girl, your liver can't take. Anymore. One more double. Uh, soon you'll be throwing up blood on the beautiful ship in flood. Sing Dylan tonight. Yes, in the field. Soon as you open your mouth, it always ends up in a fight. Shut up, you shut up. I think it's still up for grabs. Who the real is holding? I'll tell you who's the real. Why don't you butt the out? It's not in your business. To who am I, what am I, where am I, and I... Oh, I just can't go on. I'm sorry, I... I don't know what's wrong with me. I, uh, I, I took a nap this afternoon. Like, never take a nap in the afternoon. You know, I, I kind of came to sort of half-conscious in that kind of hot, really overripe afternoon sunshine, you know, and all sticky and sweaty lying there, and I... I was just paralyzed with fear. I, couldn't remember who I was. I didn't know who I was, and then I couldn't remember what I was. And I was terrified to move because I didn't know where I was. And like, am I, what am I? Am I a bug? Uh, like some kind of one-celled animal in some primordial swamp somewhere? Uh, am I in space? Am I on Earth? Am I alive or dead? What? And then I, I, I started to come to a bit more and I realized I drooled in my sleep, right? And there was all this kind of stale spit on the pillow, you know, when you're kind of really slobbed off. And I, I said, oh, oh yeah, no, no, I'm not the spit. I'm actually a human being attached to the spit. And this is me and that's okay. And I'm a human being and there is a God and, and he's here and he's watching me like some kind of giant peeping Tom, judging my lazy, confused, stupid life. And I'm not good enough. I'll never measure up and it's all horrible. And I, really, I don't care. And I, then I started to panic, my heart started to race, and I really started to come to, and I said, it's okay, I said, you know, I'm a, I'm a human being, I'm a man, I'm, a, I'm Greg Malone, that's who I am, and it's 1980, whatever it is, 1980-something, and I have a, 
a family and children and responsibility, and then I really started to freak out at that. And so we have some guests on the show today, and we're going to talk to them about this, and maybe some other questions will come around. And uh, is our first guest ready? Let's see if he's ready. He oh, is he still crying? Let's just bring on Tommy and Mary first. I want to bring on Tom and Mary, our other two guests. Come on. Guys, how are you? You there? Great. Hi, Mary. Thanks for coming. Hi, okay. Hi. Good. Tommy, I appreciate this. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Have a seat, and we'll get right to it. I wanted to start with you, Mary. Uh, it's okay. I just wanted to sort of ask you, um, really, what uh, you wanted to talk about today. Well, I knew you were going to ask me that question, Greg, and so I, I've been thinking about it all day, and I don't know. I'm just so unhappy. You you. And I don't know why I'm unhappy, and that makes it even even worse in a way, you know, because yeah. I'm just unhappy. I know, I know exactly. That's that's great. Uh, I, I think, well, let Tom, you jump in here, and I think you might be able to add something to this, because <laughs> we were talking earlier, and you, Tom, really haven't seen the light of day for a couple of years now, have you? And your, your wife's left you, I know that. And you've been sort of hiding out, really, inside that beautiful suburban home of yours. And are your children still with you? No, no, Greg, my kids are gone now. They took the kids away. And you miss them? I miss them desperately. I just cry and cry every time I see them. Why? Well, it's just the thought of it, you know? It's like these beautiful little kids, and they have to go out and face this world, this horrible friggin' world, yeah. you know? It's not yeah. fair, it's not yeah. right, and I just get so anxious. And then I see them, and I feel all guilt-ridden, like, what am I doing, perpetuating all my stupid fears and guilt in another generation? What do you have kids for? I know, exactly. We're all freaked out, right? We're all freaked out, and we invent all these reasons for having children, and really, I just think our genetic light turns green, and we go. That's it. But I, I love them desperately. Too desperately. Yes. Yeah, but you were going to say, what do you think? Well, like, what? Bob went to Montreal two weeks ago, right? right? And he never called or wrote or anything. And when he left, I just sort of thought, well, he'll probably go and he won't write me or anything. And then he didn't. Why? Well, I know. Well, what, what do you imagine is the worst reason why Bob didn't write you? Well, I guess he probably got another girlfriend, you know. I'm just some old bag he had a good time with, you no. know? A few laughs with, right? Yeah, or a what? Or at. Right, or at. And then he just dumped me. And that's it. What? Well, I mean, that's it. That's, that's the explanation. I mean, if you can live with that explanation, well, I mean, you can live with just about anything, can't you, really? Right? That's the bottom line, I guess. Right? Just, just a second now. I'm going to get back to you, but I want to see if our other special guest is ready to come on here. How are you doing? I can't. No, no, it's okay. I just can't. No, that's all right. You don't have to. No, but I, I, I want you to stay. I want because I'm going to get to talk to you next week. I want you to hang on. I really do want to talk to you about this. So don't, don't despair. If it's not this week, it's next week, okay? And next week we're going to talk about the kind of cold waves of anxiety that you get inside your body. That's just like hot with fear, you know, in malls and that kind of thing. Uh, so I mean, remember our motto: uh, when you can't cope anymore, then you're coped with, and that's a whole lot worse. So stay on top of it. Fake it if you've got to. We'll get back to you. We'll be back next week. Uh, so look forward to that. Well, don't look forward to that and don't depend on it or probably won't happen.